introductions. So Nate, tell us about yourself. Yeah, sure. So I uh, head up uh, growth at Bancor. I've been with the project since early 2018. Um, actually started my career as a financial journalist uh, in New York for many years. Uh, went back to school to learn how to code, uh, moved out to San Francisco and started and uh, sold a couple uh, mobile internet companies and then stumbled on Ethereum in about 2017, um, was trading um, tokens, just uh, doing some trading and, and stumbled on, on Bancor uh, and, and realized that there weren't any order books on the site. So I was um, super interested in that, dug in a little deeper and realized there was this thing called automated market makers that was powering the system. So really went down the rabbit hole, reached out to the Bancor people and became really obsessed with kind of uh, automated market makers and decentralized liquidity. Um, that was uh, early 2018. And since then we've seen really massive growth in uh, AMM based decentralized exchanges. So um, yeah, it's been a wild ride. Awesome, awesome, welcome. Stefan? Yeah, so I have not been with the project for so long. I'm a banker consultant from background, so I used to be more blue chip, uh, blue chip area, but have been in the token space uh, for a while, um, running a consultancy, and I joined Banco as an advisor, especially on the V2.1, looking at the economics, uh, the token economics, looking at the mechanism economics, because their new system is pretty interesting with this um, impermanent loss insurance, which is quite a uh, quite a cool feature. And I was writing the paper, the economics paper that went out with the um, with the project, uh, which was quite interesting in the sense that I could I way back uh, I used to do derivatives uh, pricing and stuff, and I actually could use a lot of my derivatives pricing background in going in there because ultimately this is an insurance, this is a derivative. And um, yeah, it is like a super advanced financial product um, that, that Banco is putting out there. All right, welcome, welcome. So how would you explain Banco to somebody who's maybe not in crypto? Wow. Um, so I guess uh, the real innovation uh, of, of Bancor is, um, you know, throughout time we've had asset exchanges. And these asset exchanges need liquidity in order to have trades be processed through order books. And traditionally that liquidity is provided by the exchange or by professional market makers who typically run bots that buy and sell uh, an asset. Um, and in order to be a market maker, on an exchange, you have to have quite a bit of money and quite a bit of sort of technical prowess. Um, these are like the, the Goldman Sachs, the, the MIT PhDs who typically run uh, professional kind of market making shops. Now, Bancor, once it came along, uh, introduced an automated way to market make. So anyone who's holding uh, any token can simply lock those tokens inside a smart contract that automatically buys and sells tokens that along a sort of, uh, we call it a bonding curve, but that really automatically prices the, the trades and they can generate a fee from each one of those trades. So it's sort of similar to, I guess, staking uh, a token or uh, lending a token but you're lending it to a exchange and extracting a fee from trades that occur in the token that you've provided to the exchange. So now I've realized that that explanation probably wouldn't make any sense to someone who's not in crypto. No, um, I mean, uh, it does. So I think at a high level, it's essentially peer-to-peer -peer market making, right? So basically, yeah, you have... yeah go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, so you essentially, as a liquidity provider, so, so Bancor offers a service to people who have tokens to put them in a liquidity pool, and the liquidity pool is then a market maker against which other people can, uh, can trade. 
And Bangkok was, if I understand, I believe, because I haven't been for so long, but they were really pretty much the first ones um, to, to get the thing up and going. Um, but then one thing that people realized that there is an issue. And the issue is that, and it's an issue that normal market makers also have, is that if you make markets, you have to hold the assets because, well, especially if you have, if you make markets with instantaneous delivery on, yeah, on the external market is a little bit different because you might not have to hold the asset because you might only have to deliver it two days later and you might get it somewhere else from two days later. But we have instantaneous delivery here. And the only way that you can have instantaneous deliveries is if you actually hold the asset. You have to hold both assets in the pool. And Bancor has quite an interesting system there that A, um, rather than having cross uh, a pool for every cross, uh, which can get very, very big, yeah, when you have a um, hundred different assets that you want to trade, then you have essentially half times hundred times 99 different pools. So you have almost 5,000 pools that you need to every to trade every um, pool. Um, Banco trades everything against BNT. And uh, this means if you trade 100 assets, you need 100 pools. So that's sort of the first point. But the second point is you still, as a liquidity provider, you need to put the, you need to keep a certain balance of assets. And the, the way AMM does it, they keep the same dollar amount of assets in both pools. Now, this sounds nice, but the problem is what happens if, if one of the assets goes up, then, well, then one is gonna be worth 110 and the other is still gonna be 100. In order to keep the same dollar amount, you have to sell the assets that went up and uh, buy the assets that didn't go up. And this means on the upside, you keep selling assets um, and on the downside, you keep buying assets. And this means you're missing trends. Yeah, if, uh, um, if you would just hodl, then if the one asset goes up, then well, you just go up with the asset. But in an AMM pool, whenever the asset goes up a bit, you sell it, you sell it, you sell it, and you miss a rally. And the interesting thing about Bancor V2.1, and this is really sort of the core of what I've written about in the um, uh, economics paper, is that this, what is referred to slightly in a slightly bad terminology as impermanent loss, because it's often pretty permanent, um, that there is an impermanent loss insurance, if you so want. So to some extent, Banker is a network. Banker as a system provides insurance for the liquidity provider against this impermanent loss. So there is an agreement, like an insurance agreement, that look, you put these things in the pool, you earn your fees, um, and we provide you insurance um, that these um, that these uh, that that you don't have in permanent loss, and so this means that you can diversify your risk um, against these things, and then that you can still, with a hold of you, can still put things into a liquidity pool, which you could otherwise not do uh, because you know you miss on every rally um, that there is. Okay, uh, great, great. So thank you for that, Stefan. That was definitely quite a, a very thorough overview.